Cage Minds, Michael Frankel, joined by Leo Grachov. A little closer. A little closer. <laughs> Gonna get the name one day, sir. Thank you for the time. And man, pro debut upon you. How, how cool does that sound? Man, that's awesome. It's been a long time coming. Uh, you know, I've spent about 10 years in the amateurs now, so uh, this is something that's been a dream of mine for a long time, and it's finally here, and I'm excited and ready to get after it. Was there a point where you didn't think this day would come? This this decision you kind of been postponing. Did you think it was gonna? It wouldn't. You wouldn't reach this finish line. Well, you know, I was really trying to make the 2016 Olympic team. That didn't happen. That was four years ago. Um, and then I was wondering, you know, how much longer I was gonna box, whether I should turn pro, do this or that. And I took a little bit of time off, kind of stayed in the amateurs, started winning, uh, got ranked real high in the amateurs, kept doing that. And before I knew it, another four years have gone by, and uh, it just feels like the right time now. So here we are. What's the biggest takeaway you have from all that amateur competition? Uh, I've, I've fought the best dudes in the United States. Uh, you know, I've had over 60 fights now, and uh, I've, I've seen every style. So I'm, I'm, I'm confident. I'm truly confident going in there now. Now you've been working out at Sanchez Brothers. Pepe's going to be in your corner for this fight. What was that conversation like? Saying, "Okay, I'm ready. Let's get me a pro fight." Uh, so when I first showed up at uh, Pepe's gym, I started training there. I want to say. Uh, in uh, maybe the fall of 2019. I haven't been there that long, maybe about six months, uh, seven months. Uh, he, and uh, he, he knew I was still in the amateur circuit at the time. And uh, that was a conversation we had even, you know, before all the Olympic trials qualifiers, all that stuff. He said, you know, are you looking to turn pro? I said, yes, I am. And we kind of started soft pitching some dates. And, uh, you know, I told him I am going to try to make a, a, the Olympic team, this and that. and kind of threw the schedule together and it, and it looked like it was going to be uh, early 2020 so um, you know that's what we've been shooting for and me and him developed a good relationship by now and I feel great having him in my corner and uh, he's worked enough with me that you know we're comfortable around each other. You went out to the qualifiers and from what I understand you did win the first and I think like the second round of each qualifier but it was later on in the competition where you got eliminated? Right. Um, I went out to Ohio. In Ohio, I was um, one win away from uh, from making the trials. Then I went back out in California. Um, I fought a guy from San Antonio. I thought I thought I had the decision, but they gave him a split. And uh, it, it is what it is. Um, it happens. Uh, you know, I made the. Uh, you know, every four years it's the Olympic trials, but every year in between that is just the U.S. team trials. And I made the U.S. team trials two years prior to that. Um, so, you know, it was just unfortunate I didn't make it. One of those things, decision could have gone either way. I thought I had it, but I'm, I'm over it and ready to move on. How much time did it take, though, to, did you need to step away from boxing? What did it take to, to get ready to come back? Because having that kind of circumstances, getting so close, I'm guessing that, that it took a minute. You needed some time for yourself. Well, you know, I'm, I'm never the type of person that likes to rest, but um, my father, he actually invited me to go on vacation with him, so I, and I haven't gone on vacation in, oh, I don't know, seven, eight years, so me and him, uh, uh, we went out to a, a resort out in Mexico, all inclusive, it was great, so I took about ten days off, and after that I got right back in the gym, told Pepe to, uh, you know, start finding me some fights, and uh, we landed in this car with Legacy Boxing, so I'm very excited about that. March Madness, March 28th, Kiva Auditorium, Mark Martinez, the pro debut. How, does it get you excited hearing all that? It does, man, it does. You know, it's a, uh, it's a big step and it's the next step. And I know it's a step in the right direction. You know, in the amateurs, you, you're you just going so hard, so fast, and you don't know who your opponent is. And you, sometimes you're showing up and, uh, you know, there's a lot of politics and stuff, but this this really feels like you know I have I have a road in front of me that uh, I know where I'm going, and this is definitely the right right step, right first step to take. I talk to a lot of amateurs, but I feel like talking to you is a little bit different. Somebody that's sparred John Jones and has been in the amateur circuit for so long. Does going another round? Is there many adjustments that come with the first quote unquote pro camp? Uh, for me, you know, I, I, I try to lengthen my sparring a little bit. Um, I'm sparring, you know, six to eight rounds comfortably now. Um, 
you know, when you fight in the amateurs, you know, I heard Evander Holyfield say once, it's kind of like you're holding your breath for three minutes, you're sprinting, take a minute break, and you do that two more times. Uh, you know, in the pros with the smaller gloves, you, you, you know, you have to pick your shots a little better and a little more, um, a little more technique to it. So I'm, I'm excited. I feel like that will play great for me. But you know, like you said, I spar with a lot of high-level names. You know, John Jones. I spar with Andy Ruiz. Um, you know, I work with my friend Alonzo Butler, who's had you know close to 40 pro fights. Um, you know, a lot of other names down there. You know, Dominic Brazil. You know, in uh, LA stuff like that. So it, it, it's been great, and I've had all, all that experience. And uh, like I said, it just feels right right now. It feels right. What are your expectations for the 28th? Man, you know, I, I want to go out there. I want to make a statement. I want to, uh, you know, I, I've never been the type of guy to, to promise anything, any knockouts, any world titles. You know, I just hope I, people accept me for who I am as a person, as an athlete. You know, I'm going to do my best to go out there, put the guy away. Um, but I'm, I'm going to give him a great fight. You know, I've been training my ass off, and I'm hoping everybody sees that. And everybody, all my friends that come to the fight, they enjoy it, and they love it. And I walk away with a victory. And, you know, God willing, it'll be a big knockout finish. Smaller gloves, no headgear, one more round. Does it feel like it's the same sport but a different game almost? A little bit, a little bit. It feels like the stakes are a little higher. Um, you know, I, I fought in the 20, 2015 trials qualifiers. They took the headgears off, so I fought without headgear before. Um, you know, I've done some less than sanctioned fights back in the day, you know, where we use small gloves, stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> but it definitely is, you know, it's got that feel of professionalism to it, so I'm, I'm very excited for it. I'm pretty sure the old goal list got torn down, thrown away, now you're starting a new journey. What do those goals include now as a pro boxer? My, my, uh, my goals have always been to be a world champion, so uh, like I said, this is a first step. I want to get as many fights as I can this year. Um, you know, if I, if I can stay local, I'd love to do that. If I have to travel, we'll have to travel. Um, I kind of played around with uh, signing uh, in Vegas, but uh, you know, like I said, it was a blessing. I was able to get some fights here, and uh, if I can keep getting fights here, I'd love to do that. You know, I, I live in Albuquerque. I love it out here, and I'd love to get as many local fights as I can. Um, but for now, you know, I want to spend a year, next two years, building my resume um, before I take my talents to Vegas or back to South, Southern Cal. How do you establish yourself? How do you make a statement? and start to get that name known so you can start building that buzz? Uh, for me, you know, I believe a lot, of, a lot of people, you know, they like the knockout. They like the knockout, they like the big punches, but to me, to me personally, I like to show a master class of boxing. I don't like to just go out there and throw hands. I, I want to break the guy down systematically before I put him down. So that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show my skills. I'm going you know, to establish a jab, show my footwork, land the big right hand, and like I said, God willing, and the fight early. Well, yeah, thank you for the time, sir. Thank you so much.